I'm gonna be honest, okay. This has nothing to do with our ramp, by the way. I see the comment, I'm pretty sure it's like a 10 to 15 chance when you have the King's Rock on a Pokemon to flinch. It's low. Yeah. Swirls half of his moves crit or flinch. <laughs> his odds of flinching something is so fucking high and I don't know why. Swirl would not survive in a Sophie game. Oh my god, Sophie hates me. And I've stopped yeah. using flinch moves. Now you're doing it. Hey, I only do it once. I can only do it at the beginning. Yeah, but it's guaranteed. Yeah, it's guaranteed. I've been doing that since day one, though. Now I got Stone Edge, so I'm just trying to one-shot and maybe flinch on a Clash. <laughs> you sounded very buff You sounded very either confused or annoyed when, when I told you how much damage High Jump Kick does. Or how much damage my moves were doing. Yeah, because I'm sitting here like, oh, wait, even when I'm at Tyranitar, I don't think I'm going to have damage you, and that's wild to me. <laughs> I, like, I'm, like I said, I'm using my strongest move, Parker. There's no stronger really? rock move than Stone Edge. Yeah. And no stronger Listen, dark move than Crunch. Fighting, fighting types will fuck you up. <laughs> that's why I love them. It's like, I picked this thing to hit hard once, and here you are being like, I'm going to hit hard all the time. <laughs> I'm not even at strong, my strongest. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Hey, fun fact stream, next time I play PMD and we get in combat, I'm gonna try and break my legs using high jump kick and maybe I'm do gonna... like I'm maybe do thirteen dice of damage to so something. Like, okay, what do you do? I wanna break my ankles. Okay. But hey, thirteen dice of damage. Also, I was well aware that if I asked that Altaria to teach me move, it was going to be in a real jank way, because it just evolved. But I was like, I want this. I already yeah, am on my, I'm on I'll limited time. I'm be real, time. man. Do anything you need to do to get Dragon Dance. I'm on limited time as Pupitar. Sophie's going to make me evolve as soon as she can. I, I just need to make sure it. I get Iron Defense. Yeah. I've, well, we're both in the same boat. We've learned our strongest move now. Like, the only other really big move I have to learn, for it personally, is Aura Sphere. And that's just to have a special. And okay. Aura Spheres also never fail, which is fun. Oh, it sure is. It's real good. I can't wait to, like, triple multi-action Aura Sphere and just do, like, Key Blast from Dragon Ball Z. Just rapid. Alright, but I, once I'm Tyranitar, that quest oh. starts again. Leaf Storm, I cannot wait. Leaf Sword said, I can't wait for you to just split someone in half with high jump kick, Parker. I'm oh, like, oh, I live for oh, it. Don't worry, I'll set you up by yelling really loud at them. <laughs> My highest accuracy move, Screech. If, the, if I ever roll, like, max damage on my high jump kick, they better turn into paste. Like, is that the point where I might damage the big bad? Probably. But I I might damage a fucked up Mewtwo. Watch up, he surprised you all by keeping Kai as Pupitar for as long as she can just to troll me. That's not trolling me, though. Yeah, no, the thing is, Sophie's definitely not going to do that because Sophie this really hates looking at Pupitar. I'm the one that's like, I like, I'm fine with this. It's like a cocoon. It's like a rock cocoon. I'm cool with it. And then Sophie says, this is an abomination on Earth that should not exist. I'm like, okay. Okay. But I mean, once I get Iron Defense, I'm all good. I just need that one to remove. But anyways, what was... We went off topic. Anything else on D&D? No, I got nothing. Got nothing? Anything you guys want us to talk about in D&D? In, from chat? While Naboris just tears apart this fish. I just hope Sophie never puts another Sharpedo in front of us, because we've learned that's the antithesis of our team, apparently. Seems like it. That thing fucked us up more than the Dark Rai did. <laughs> hey man, I already knew that water tips would not be good for me. Also, the Dark Rai fucked us up more. The Dark Rai fucked us up more? Oh, Parker, yeah. I died and then got brought back, and then almost died again. Yeah. I was... 
I don't have any way to make the enemies attack me. I just really want them to because I can most of the time endure through a lot of attack. I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. There's only one move in the game that makes an enemy attack you. I know, and I don't get it. Not, not a lot of Pokemon get it. I want so badly to just have a point where I'm just like, I'm going to triple multi-action endure. That way, no matter how many times that uh, that Pokemon multi-actions against me, I'm not going to die. Doesn't endure last for a round, or is it only just a single attack? It's for the, the single attack. Okay. Well, doesn't that mean Fury Sipes just destroys you? Yeah, any multi-hit moves is not going to be good. Well, here's a question, or not a question, just if you guys want, what's anything based on the campaigns that you've seen between Mystery Dungeon and uh, Poke Roll that you guys want to ask about? You know when Nuzlocke uh, fucking waited in your favor when you were relaxed enough to just start doing a Q&A during a Nuzlocke? Sure am. I'm just mas mashing the A button. To be honest, that's always what... I'm surprised people went with Saffron, because that's all this is. It's just me fighting some, like, weak Team Rocket grunts for, like... Fucking... Two hours. Mm-hmm. It's not a difficult place. It's very tedious. The only thing that's difficult is fighting Gary and fighting Giovanni. Well, uh, Lee Storm, he was he was asking any questions about the stream games, Poker Roll or PMD. How far ahead is planning, and does it work? Um. Planning <laughs> sessions. Okay, here's okay. I'll tell my experience with it because while Parker's. A good DM, and I'm not. Don't put me in that kind of pressure. Um, I learned stuff from my first time DMing, and am now on the second. And what I learned is the best way I've found to plan is not to set what your players will do, but just put checkpoints they need to reach. Because that way, it doesn't matter what the fuck they do to get there, all you care about is that they get there. And that's what the MacGuffins are basically in the campaign, Parker. It's just, you got it! And that's what that's the checkpoint you need to reach. And then you can move on to the next, and I don't care how you get there. You can tell me you'd fucking build it, want to build a gun to snipe the fucking lizard folk's head and steal a thing from him. I'd be like, alright. Hey, that's plan C. Um, but that's that's what I found for planning. Don't plan what your players will do. Plan what they need. As for saying, uh, does it ever pay off? Yes, but rarely. Unless you know your group very, very well. You are never going to predict what they want to do. And I still even think when you know them that well, you're not going to accurately predict what they want to do. I'm surprised you because guys just like try and steal the fucking thing from these people. Well, there's a lot of them, <laughs> <laughs> and none of us are sneaky. Guys. That's true. Not one of us. Molly was there. Um, it does pay off very rarely, but I have had those moments where something happens, like a story arc comes to a conclusion that I had planned, and it reaches that conclusion, and the player either did not see it coming or really liked it. And that is the best feeling as a DM that you could actually ever feel. You actually got a couple of those on the recent 5e. Do you want to tell those those tales? Uh, you remind me which... I know one. I know the big end one, but tell me the other one. Okay, well, so there's a, a Toriel's dad. Mm -hmm. There's Layla. I know that one was a big one that you were hoping would happen and it paid off. There's... Oh, let me see. Which part, which part of Layla? I think it's the ending when... Because you were trying, well not, you were trying at the start, it's just sort of worked mm -hmm. that way with how the group wanted to play it, with how Toriel was going to progress through the story, but having mm -hmm. the plan of, from the start was to get Toriel to reject the patron and then end with how uh, Layla would, you know, end, Try not to, I'm trying to be vague so it doesn't tell the story if you want to tell it. I think that one was a good one too. Mm-hmm. It's, um, 
Those are both really good. That was definitely a roller coaster. Is there anything else? Any other like story arcs? Samson doesn't have any. I don't think Ava's really had any huge ones. Like I've been trying the whole progression of her personality, but that's not really a arc payoff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess it's really just Toriel, because that's most of the focus of her thing. My my favorite has definitely been so. We have, so stream, we have, um, I have a long history of playing with pretty much everyone in here at this point, but with a couple of them, a much longer history, a couple of them were the first people I played D&D with. Hi. When one of them was Sophie. Uh, Sophie's character in my home game, I'm going to call it my home game because it's not on stream, is Toriel. It was an ASMR war Pact of the Fiend Warlock, which, yeah, that's a mix. Um, and she gave me this backstory that was, hey, uh, you know, blah, 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 here's all this drama. Uh, she really loves her mom, because her mom was the only one that was there for her child. Here's all this drama with her mom. She tried to get this devil to help, but the devil tricked her, blah, blah, blah. That's all whatever. Tor and through this, Toriel kind of turned into a shitty person. Shocking. Um, Still struggling to get it to be a good person. I don't think it's going to happen. So then I ask, because I cover all, when someone asks, shows me their story, I kind of cover all the bases that I want to know. And the other one of them is usually, what are both parents' situations? So I ask, so what's, uh, what's the deal with her dad? She's like, I don't know, probably never knew him. He probably wasn't there. And she didn't have anything she wanted to figure out beyond that. And I was like, okay. And that's that thing any DM loves when your player just gives you a nice little blank check in the middle of their backstory, and you'd be like, hmm, that, a monkey wrench fits really nicely right there. So, we, we're playing the game, we're playing the, play, playing the game, we're playing the game, and they encounter, and I have made it known that I have cameos of characters all the time in, this, in our game, all the time. One of them was the trio that was the original party when me, Sophie, and Molly played D&D for the first time. It was that trio, because we played that campaign for years with that, with that, those were our first created characters ever. They knew they were there, and they were just like, oh, that's a cool cameo, all that. Year, literally, I think two years go by. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Toriel and so like Toriel, Sophie's character has been through a lot, has gone through a lot of changes, and has gone from hating the world to trying to redeem herself, trying to be a nicer person for the sake of her mom. She met her she met her half sister, and even wants to meet her father because apparently her father didn't know she existed because her mother never told. Him. So she goes up to meet him after a lot of drama. Like, I, I, explaining it this, explaining it through all this doesn't really give the amount of build-up and drama that was put behind this situation. It was a lot. And when she gets there, I introduce him, and it's Wolford, which is my character from our original thing, but he's older now. And Sophie just broke down at that moment. And it was beautiful. It Everyone. was that she loved it, I loved it, it was amazing. Everyone there knew at that point, except for Sophie, who the father was. Mm -hmm. it, was the one, it was the one it was about, and it was a beautiful... Those, those specific moments are the part where you're like, I'm glad I planned this. I am very... Because if you don't plan things like that, they will never happen. If you don't set things up, they will never happen. So it's okay to go in with nary a plan, or very few things in mind, but it makes it very hard to have those moments. I'm an advocate for heavy thought, not heavy planning, because heavy planning leads to railroading. I'm an advocate for heavy thought behind your characters and your campaign. So that's what I, that's the, I hope that answered whatever the fuck the question was, because I lost the question a while ago. Well, I think it does. Okay. <laughs> was that what you wanted me to share, Kai? Was that the story? That was a good one. Yeah.
That's the same campaign that we're almost done with. Very close. We're, we're very close to being done with it. We're gonna go to we hell, scope out a prison, summon a devil, and try and break some people out while we summon a uh, devil. No joke, we've been playing it for almost fucking, like, three years. Yeah. <laughs> Off and on, to be fair. It hasn't been three years straight. No, yeah, yeah. God, can you imagine? That would be absolutely insane. Alright, see ya, full deck. See ya, full deck. I said full deck, ninja. I read full decks first, I just saw goodnight, and I was like, ah, it's full deck. No, full deck's still here. Blame Kai, I just followed what he said. Yeah, just because you're a sheeple. True. But I am god of the world we play in. God sheeple? God sheeple. Almost done scaling this tower. Dude, my headphones have... I don't know why just recently it's become a problem, but it's like there's no... Suddenly just no airflow, and my... Like, the sides of my head just get so hot. I need to be a rude full deck. Dropping some hard eyes. Amulet coin! Money! Money! <laughs> you gotta give money to anyone? Oh, I need that money because, man, you missed it. There's a fucking Metagross in the game corner. <laughs> oh, are you fucking for real? There sure do be. Oh, my God. Who do I give it to? Hey, Boris. <laughs> no, he has the uh, soft sand. It makes earthquakes one shot even more. Swirl has the King's Rock, and he needs that. Poseidon has the Mystic Water. Yeah. Sure. Metapog? What do you have, Metapog? Twisted Spoon? Um, I can take it off, Metapog. Why does... Why does Butterfree have a Twisted Spoon? It only knows Psychic and Dream Meter. That'll answer that question. Because there's not a lot of great bug-type moves in Gen 1, man. I don't know when it learns Silver Wind, but it's way off. Anyone, uh, any other questions, gang? I'm doing literally nothing tonight. Parker has I'm, I'm very, th I mean, considering I'm on DM vacation right now, except for stream. Yeah. I've gone from DMing twice a week to DMing once every two weeks. Liberating. And I've had this, and I'm, and I had last week off because I, because Sophie is DMing PMG two weeks in a row. Who would even watch this one? I almost never even looked at the screen now I don't need to enough for Tech Girl 1. I mean, I think it's fun. <laughs> Whenever I see a god Pokemon. Kai, people only watch Nuzlocke to see the suffering. Well. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. The tenth floor. So good for you of you to join me. Wow, the tenth floor, guys. So high. The tenth floor. Oh god, he has a typhlosion. <laughs> Any tips for speeding up combat? We're so slow. One turn takes ten minutes. That's yeah, how the players that. are. To be honest. Oh wait. I feel that. Um, Let me ask one question. Are you putting a bunch of enemies at the team, or just like a couple strong ones? Oh, answer me this question. How big is your party? That's that what too. I want to know. I want to know how big your party is.
soul do? Well, if only I had a Latios or Latias. Does nothing otherwise. I'll say this about martial classes, though. Turns are easy. <laughs> sure. Look, when you're a fighter and you so go, I want to stab. Okay, do you want to stab, like, a lot? <laughs> you want to stab super a lot? Uh, it's up to you. Yeah, that's funny. What a Party is five players and a few NPCs they adopted. So it's about the cars, Kai. Uh, pretty much the same. Uh, pretty much the same. So what I would say is it's very helpful for the af at least after the first round. For the first round it can be it can just play out without the party knowing. After the first round, make sure the turn order is put in front of everyone. That way people know when their turn is coming up and the DM can even say, all right, it's your turn and you are uh, like, person A, it's your turn and person B, you are next. Person B should be th should be thinking about what they want to do right now while person A is going. So that when it's the person B's turn, they're ready to go. They know what they want to do. And barring some drastic change, they should know what they want to do. Because what slows it down is when you say, all right, person B, it's your turn. And they're like, oh, okay. And they just then start thinking about what they want to do. Make sure people are paying attention when they need to pay attention. Correct. That's exactly what you should do. In that, in that situation, Luna should be thinking about what they want to do right now while Xeris is taking their turn. And if they don't, then... Oh no, you can't really force someone up. I mean, you can't force it to it, but you just got... It's just a social obligation where you gotta say to your players, Hey, when I say you're up next, be thinking about what you want to do. Because that's the purpose of letting you know that. Because no one wants to sit there and watch you think about what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And if it's the... And on the DM side, the DM should just be very... The DM at that point, when that combat is started, should be aware of what the monster's abilities do. Like, the DM should not be looking at their combat sheet for the first time when that combat starts. I'm a little harder on DMs than a lot of people, but I do say that if you want to be a DM, you should accept the responsibility that comes with it. To make a good game. Yeah, it certainly helps. That's the one part that helps typing all the enemy sheets in the Roll20 is I get a very intimate knowledge of what everyone does. Mm-hmm. That's how I would do it. And beyond that, you have... The thing is, you have a turn order that probably has, like, a minimum of ten people sometimes. It's gonna take a while. Na naturally, it just does take a while, because even when a person knows what they want to do, they're like, I want to cast Fireball, or I want to cast Wall of Fire, and then you guys you're gonna be like, okay, I want to set it up here, and it's like, okay, that's fixed. That means it affects this person, this person. Who needs to roll? All right, what do they roll? All right, this, okay. It's going to take, no matter how much you think about it, it's going to take time. That is one of the weaknesses of 5e, is that combat is slow. It's very slow. Uh, uh. <laughs> Considering recent combat encounters have been Dreamscape, evil clones of other players, I think I have the enemy abilities down pat. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I've taken down everyone in the Silphco Tower. Means I can leave and start going down a different route. All I have to fight whenever I want is Gary Oak and Giovanni. So, that's how I that's how I would enter that full deck. The best you can do is make sure people are paying attention and a, and they know what to do when their turn comes around. Beyond that, there's not much you can do because the ND combat or 5e combat specifically is very slow. I don't know if you're here, full deck, but Kai, you remember the uh, Cortex Prime game we did in Tales of Zadia? Yeah. I think that's the best combat system we've ever played. It sure is. It's pretty fun. It, it was fast. It was fun, and you could do you could get real creative with it. There were some times when I felt like I have no clue what to do other than say I kind of want to stab it again the same way. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which is fine. Sometimes that's what you do. You don't have to do a flourish and a flip every time. Sometimes you do just do a stab. Let's take the right, right path. There's, a, there's an area I want to go to. Well, 
don't I just fly? Why don't I just fly? battling a lot, I think. We did just do a bunch of contests. That's all that's left to Conte Contest being a loose term. Well. Yeah. You did. <laughs> everyone just said, can you... Basically, everyone just said, Parker, can you do this for me? <laughs> that is kind of the way it went. Hey, everyone evolved through it. Yep. It's just me! Me and my dumb boy that needs to evolve. Uh, another issue of mine is map design. So far I've only managed to make a literal empty platforms into decent battlegrounds. To be honest, me and Parker just find battle maps online that fit the area loudly. Sure do. So I'm definitely I've rarely made one fully from the ground up myself. It's a lot of work to do that for not a lot of payoff. What I would say is just do what you think should be there. Don't worry about putting in a certain amount of cover or a certain amount of space. Do what makes sense for the area you are in. Because oftentimes, if people want cover, they're gonna find a way to get cover, and it's just up to yeah. you to. You, like, does that make sense? If they're in a place where it'd be wide and open, that's that's fine. That's just how it, they know that going in. Like, if I'm fighting in a desert, I don't expect to be able to be playing a cover-to-cover -cover shooter. And if I'm in a forest, I expect there to be a lot of trees. That's really all your players have for expectation. Fighting a cult in orchestra pit? How do I make that good? Where do I get a map for that? I mean... An orchestra pit? I would just find some kind of like small room that's like a wooden shack or something and then just maybe put some objects that could resemble pianos or something, but generally that an orchestra pit is just filled with chairs. Yeah. You could also have the upper part open and have the whole stage and like it, the whole stage and audience area available because that could provide some interesting movement to the combat. Otherwise, it's just like, find a wooden room, find a stage, and then just sort of mix the maps, put them yeah. right next to each other. You, and if you're not, if you're not comfortable draw, like, drawing it yourself, um, what I usually do is just find some cheap JPEGs or something, some, some small stuff on Google Images, kind of paste it together. You could just do it in MS Paint, really. Um, make it the size you want it and just kind of place everything individually. It takes time, but it's not that hard. It's okay. 